Hello everyone, and welcome to Dynamics 365 Portals Tips. My name is Nicholas Hayduk, and this is tip number 37, Entity and Web Form Metadata. In the last tip, I compared entity forms and web forms, and I mentioned that they both have a metadata feature. In this tip, I'll dive a bit more into the form metadata. The Microsoft documentation provides a great description of the purpose for entity and web form metadata. It contains additional behavior modification logic to augment or override the functionality of form fields that is otherwise not possible with Dynamics 365 for customer engagement's native entity form editing capabilities. In other words, it lets you do things on your portal forms you can't normally do with the D365 forms without writing JavaScript. There are six main types of form metadata. Attribute, section, tab, Notes, Timeline, and Subgrid. I'll cover Section and Tab first, because they are simple. For both tabs and sections, Form Metadata allows you to override the default label. This is useful when you are using forms on your portal that are also used directly in Dynamics, and perhaps there are some terminology differences for internal versus external users. Using Form Metadata, you can avoid having to maintain two different versions of this form just because of some labeling differences. Next, the Notes, Timeline, and Subgrid functionality allows you to configure advanced options when these types of controls are added to the form, like file upload restrictions and the ability to restrict creating new records. Within the attribute type of form metadata, we've got a lot of options. I'll provide a high-level overview here, and then we'll get into more detail in future tips. The attribute type allows you to modify the behavior of a single field on your form. The possible modifications are broadly grouped into seven categories. First, you can modify the label for a field. You can modify the style of a control. For example, you can convert an option set dropdown to a radio button list or you can apply your own custom CSS class. You can also group multiple fields together to form composite controls, like a multiple choice matrix. You can control how a field is pre-populated, either by ignoring the typical default value or overriding it with a custom value. You can also force that a particular value will be set when the form is saved. In this case, the field doesn't even need to appear on your form. If the field is a lookup, you can select the entity form used to create new records. There's also advanced validation that you can configure, including regular expression and range validation. Finally, you can control the instructions associated with the field, including adding a custom description or pulling the field's default description property. Entity form metadata and web form metadata are simply entities related to entity forms and web form steps, respectively. You can add or edit entity form metadata via the subgrid that appears on the form, and you can add or edit web form metadata via the related entities area of a web form step. Thanks for watching. And I hope you found the Dynamics 365 portals tip number 37 on entity and web form metadata useful.